and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 1376, time needed to inform all employees. A company has n employees with unique ID for each employee from 0 to n minus 1. The head of the company is the one with head ID. Each employee has a direct manager in the manager array where managers of i is the direct manager of the ith employee and manager head ID equals minus one because obviously the head of the company doesn't have a manager. Also, it is guaranteed that the subordination relationships have a tree structure. The head of the company wants to inform all the company employees of an urgent piece of news. He will inform his direct subordinates and they will inform their subordinates and so on until all employees know about the urgent news. The ith employee needs inform time of i to inform all of his direct subordinates. Uh, so after inform time of i minutes, all of the direct subordinates can then start spreading the news. And we want to return the number of minutes needed to inform all the employees about the urgent news. So we read the question prompt, but how do we actually solve this question? Let's look at a simple example. In this example, we have six employees. The head of the company has ID two. This is the manager structure, and this is the inform time. So let's build the tree here. So we know that there's six employees, and we know that um, you know the head of the company is two. So this guy is going to be the parent, so basically the manager of everyone. So for employee zero, they have the head of the company as their manager. So this employee zero will have a node uh, to the head of the company. Same with employee number one. So they will have them. So employee two, um, obviously that's the manager, the head of the company. So they, they don't have a manager because they're the head of the company. So it looks like three, four, and five all actually report to the head of the company. So this is going to be, you know, like an NRA tree with only one level because it looks like all of the people just report to the head of the company. So we can see the, you know, weights that it takes to basically uh, inform people, right? So you know, how long does it take for zero to inform all of its subordinates? Well, it's going to take zero time because obviously they don't have any subordinates. Same with one, same with three, four and five. And all we're interested in this case is actually just the time for two to inform all of its subordinates, which is one. So in one, I guess, email or phone call, it can inform all these people. So, you know, in this case, our answer is going to be one because we can inform all of our subordinates in one time. But what if our graph was more complicated, right? What if we had like six and seven here and then like eight and nine, and then maybe nine has reports for 10 and 11. Well, this is starting to look like basically like a graph, right? We can start at the top and then traverse down and add all the times up because we know what they are in inform time. We can build our graph using this, um, you know, manager array. So we can basically know who is the manager of who we can build our graph. You know, we can say, okay, well, the people who report the subordinates of two are going to be who? Zero, one, no, not two, three, four, and five. And we can do the same thing. You know, in our example here, let's say the subordinates of zero are going to be this like six and seven. Subordinates of one, they could in this example be, um, you know, what is this going to be? Eight. And then, you know, on and on and on, we build our graph. And then all we need to do is perform either a breadth first search or a depth first search to basically just add up all of the kind of, you know, paths. And that's basically going to be how we solve this problem. All we need to do is take our original input, transform it into a graph, and then perform a simple traversal of that graph, adding up our values as we go. And that's going to be our final answer. So this diagram, as you can see, is getting a little bit messy. So I think at this point, what we should do is we should simply move to the code editor where we'll walk through the solution line by line and we're just going to code it up and it should hopefully be a lot clearer. So I will see you in the code editor. We're now in the code editor. Let's write this up. So let's handle a simple edge case here, which is actually one of the examples that lead code gives us in the case that there's actually only one employee, in which case there's no one to inform. So we can simply return zero. It could also be the case that uh, we don't have any employees at this company. Uh, in which case it's also zero. So we're just going to make a check here. We're going to say if n is actually less than or equal to one, then we just want to return zero because in that case, there's no one to inform. 
Cool, let's set up a variable to keep track of our final answer and we'll just call it res and we'll set it equal to zero. And at this point, what we need to do is we need to define our graph, which is gonna represent the you know structure of our you know org chart here, right? So we're gonna say graph and remember that we're gonna be mapping each manager to all of their subordinates. So basically it's gonna be a list of people who report to them. So we're gonna say collections dot default dict and oops i spelled default wrong uh default dict and we're gonna pass in a list now let's actually build the graph so we're gonna say for index uh parent in enumerate manager and remember the person at the ith index in manager whatever that value is represents their manager right so for the zeroth index in manager it represents who their manager is so basically what we want to do is when we want to say graph of parent actually uh, yeah we'll say graph of parent uh, dot append idx so basically we're adding the you know person at index whatever uh, to that parents list of subordinates so that's gonna be how we build the graph now we actually need to do our graph traversal and get our final answer now if you've watched this channel before you know that when presented with the choice of doing it either in a DFS or BFS manner I always opt for breadth first search because I don't like to deal with uh, recursive solutions and we have the issue of stack overflow if our you know org chart is really large so I just stick to breadth first search and I find it much easier to code if you like DFS do it that way but this solution is going to be with breadth first search so let's set up the queue that we need to use so we'll say queue equals collections dot deck oops, deck and we need to initialize our queue so at each iteration of our queue we want to know which person we're at and how much time we've taken to inform uh, the people so far so we're going to start at the head obviously we need to start at the top of the company and the initial time is going to be that first uh, amount of time it takes to actually reach all of the subordinates of the head of the company so we're going to say inform time of whatever head id is so that's the time that we've taken so far now we just simply need to perform our bfs so we're going to say while queue and what we're going to do now is we're going to pop our items from the queue and remember the first element is going to be the current employee and the second element is going to be the amount of time that we've taken so we're going to say current employee and the current time is going to be queue.pop left now what we want to do is actually update our result so we're going to say res equals the maximum whatever the current result is and the current time so that's going to be us updating our solution here and what we want to do is um, we want to basically go through all of the children and then you know continue through our bfs so we're going to say for uh, we'll call it report because you know we're now going to go through all the people that the current employee has as reports so for report in graph of current employee we're going to say q what happened here with my indentation oops sorry this is really bad radio uh, q dot append and we're going to add the you know the report right and we're going to add the current time and now we need to update it with the amount that it's going to take to actually inform that report so we're going to say inform time of report and that's what we need to add to the queue at the end we can simply return our results here so let me just make sure i haven't made any syntax errors and it looks like i haven't so we can go ahead and submit this and once this finishes running we can see that our solution is accepted so what is the time and space complexity of our algorithm here well let's think about it so the first thing that we do is we are going to have to build this graph and that's going to require us going over you know the manager array so to build the graph is basically going to be big o of m where m is the amount of people in this manager list uh, so basically all the people that we have in our company, right? We need to know all their structure. So actually we'll, we'll just call it N because that's how it's given to us. So N represents the number of employees. Then what we need to do is perform a breadth first search over our graph here and, you know, perform all of this logic to calculate our result here. And we know that um, a BFS over our tree is just going to take big O of N time because we have to touch every single node. 
So our time complexity in the end is going to be big O of 2n, but we know that asymptotically this is the same thing as big O of n. So similarly with the space complexity, actually storing this graph is just going to be big O of n. So it depends on basically the, um, you know, the amount of people that we have. And since we can't really have bi-directional um, things in our graph, we don't have to worry about it being really complicated. We're like everyone reports to everyone. It's going to be a tree structure. So it's top down. Uh, so it's just going to be big O of n there for the actual graph itself. And then the Q, uh, again, for a breadth first search, your space complexity is going to be big O of n. So like in the, you know, time complexity, we have big O of 2n, but like we previously mentioned, it's just going to be big O of n uh, asymptotically. So that is how you solve this question. Not really complicated. I think this is another one of those questions where you get some sort of input, you need to transform it into a graph and then from the graph perform some sort of traversal. In this case, it's just a depth first search or a breadth first search and you know do some sort of logic and you'll come to your final solution. So really not that complicated. I mean, this part here, uh, basically half of the question is you know just doing a standard breadth first search and then you've got two lines to actually build the graph. So it's really not that complicated, pretty standard medium. Um, definitely want to know if you're interviewing at Google because they'd like to ask this question according to the uh, lead code statistics here and it looks like Amazon has also asked it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. I have a lot of videos uploaded and I plan to make a whole lot more. So if you don't want to miss those videos, please subscribe. Otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video and have a great rest of your day. Bye.